Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. In this video, I will show you this electronic oscillator. There are many, many ways of making electronic oscillators. And this one in particular uses an optocoupler as the main component. Internally, the optocoupler is made with a light emitting diode or LED and a phototransistor. As you know, a transistor can be used as a switch. An NPN transistor acts like a normally open switch. That is, current cannot flow through collector and emitter. But when we apply a current to the base, then the switch closes and the current now can flow from collector to emitter. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. GLC PCB is a company that makes excellent quality PCBs at an unbeatable price. You can order boards online in minutes. After registration, upload your Gerber files, select the PCB properties, select the payment method and place your order. Best price and quality for all your PCB needs. The phototransistor is a special type of transistor where you do not need to apply a current directly to the base. The base is open and is sensitive to light. When the light impinges on the base, a small current is developed and the transistor closes and the current can flow. Obviously, this light is provided by the internal LED of the optocoupler. So, when you apply a current to the LED at the input of the optocoupler, the transistor closes and the current can flow from collector to emitter at the output of the optocoupler. As you can see, there is no electrical connection between the output and the input. The input and output are only coupled through the light of the LED. Here we can see the schematic of the oscillator. I am using a PC817, which has the following pinout. Here, where you have the mark, is pin number one. Then we have two, three, and four. And it's the same as in the diagram. 1, 2, 3, and 4. The supply voltage goes in these two points, positive and negative. Around 7 to 9 volts works well for this circuit. And we have this LED which turns on and off at the frequency of the oscillator. The circuit works in the following way. When we connect to the power supply, this capacitor starts to charge through this resistor, but when it is charging, the voltage here is not high enough to turn on the internal LED of the optocoupler. Once the capacitor is charged, the voltage here is high enough, this LED turns on and the transistor is activated. Then the current can flow through or external LED, which turns on, but the current is consumed by the internal LED and the capacitor discharges. Then the voltage here goes down, the LED turns off, the transistor does not conduct anymore, and our LED goes off. Then the capacitor starts to charge again, and the cycle repeats. Of course, the frequency of oscillation depends on this capacitor and the resistor. A large capacitor needs more time to fully charge and the frequency of oscillator will be lower and vice versa. And the resistor, a large resistor, will make the current flow less current and therefore the capacitor will take more time to charge. Therefore, 
small capacitance and small resistance will yield a high frequency of oscillation and vice versa. Ok, let's test the circuit, first using a 220 microfarad capacitor. This will give a small frequency of oscillation of around 2 Hz. Now I will change the capacitor with a smaller one of 47 microfarads to see how the frequency of oscillation increases. With an even smaller capacitor of 0.1 microfarads, the LED seems to be always on, but that is because the frequency is too high and the human eye cannot detect the flashing. In the oscilloscope we can see the pulses generated by the oscillator. And you can see that with this small capacitor of 0.1 microfarads, the frequency of oscillation is 2.46 kHz. Ok, so there it is, an optocoupler oscillator. I hope you liked the video. If you want to help me, please consider making a donation on Patreon. Thanks for your visit and see you in the next video.